Alolan Golem is the only Pokemon with access to the ability Galvanize. This makes all normal type moves become electric type and have 1.2 times power. We paired this with Explosion and we have one of the most powerful moves in the game. Explosion at the cost of literally blowing yourself up is a 250 base power normal move. And even though this move was nerfed from Gen 5 onward by no longer having the opponent's defense, it's still an extremely powerful nuke. After that galvanized boost, this is actually the highest base damage output in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle today. We are back again with the Exploding Revival Blessing team, and it's a whole lot of fun. If you enjoy that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. YouTube tells me that like half of you guys aren't subscribed, so just hit the button. It takes like two seconds, and I promise you won't regret it. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so right off the bat, my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Annihilate. And it's like, damn, I, I le I'd at least like to be wined and dined first. However, I decide to toss out the Young Nut. So here's the thing. I'm actually not too worried about this thing setting up early because, as you're going to notice, they hit me with the Drain Punch, essentially just to break my Sturdy ability. But that's going to activate my Red card, and that's going to go ahead and force him to get the hell out of here. So listen, Annihilate is probably the scariest Pokemon on their team with that ability to set up bulk ups. It, uh, it can hit extremely hard with Rage Fist after you touch it, and it's just overall, a thing's a problem. But... The current problem at hand is now the Galarian Slowking here, so I take this opportunity to lay up a nice little layer of Stealth Rocks, and unless this thing is carrying Flamethrower for coverage, I'm feeling like a pretty safe nut over here. I'm just going to lay down some spikes as they actually just end up switching out. Now, the reason why I risk it is just essentially I've used up my red card, my Sturdy is broken, and I've laid down my Stealth Rock already, so Fortress is just here to be you know, a hazard menace at this point. I'm going to lay down the sharpest Legos I can imagine. I'm talking like the one by one with the studs on four sides and uh that's actually gonna be pretty nice to try to limit some switches and do some chip damage to open up the game for you know my sweepers in the back so with the nightlight being back in i've already used up my red card and this thing is basically free to start setting up bull cups and that is exactly the opposite of what we want but here's the thing i have one round fella who is actually perfectly fit for the job here this thing being a big threat i'm willing to kind of use use up some assets if you will <laughs> to take care of it so I go for the Volt Switch, and being the slower Volt Switch opens up the opportunity to get a free switch into whatever I want. And of course, you already know we're bringing in the boy Donut. So, this golem has two goals. Have a sweet beard, and blow up. And we've already got the sweet beard. Plus, your ghost type has no power here. What the fuck? So, due to our galvanize ability and just the sheer power of an electric explosion with the stab, that is going to be able to take care of the plus one defense annihilate. And that is exactly what we're out here to do, boys. Sometimes you gotta trade Golem for a big threat, and that it could not have been a better example. So, now we have an empty battlefield. It's a little bit full of rubble, but I'm gonna decide to go into the Persian, and they're gonna bring in the Galarian Articuno. So, I feel like I have a decent matchup here. I know that this thing probably can't knock me out with one hit, and I have a little bit of a plan here. So, my plan is to go for Fake Out initially, try to grab a little bit of chip damage, and if I can activate the Throat Spray with my Hyper Voice, uh, at plus one special attack, paired with our Technician ability that boosts uh, damage of moves that have 60 base power or less like the Icy Wind, we might be able to get a little something going here. So now I decide to just go ahead and yell at him, and of course all that yelling makes the makes the throat a little raspy. So we decide to activate that Throat Spray, gives us a nice little plus one in special attack, and the Puthy is now in full form. Unfortunately, however, they decide to go for the Recover, and that's going to put him back to a pretty respectable amount of health. But listen, I'm at plus one, and the Persian still can't complain in this position. So I go for that Icy Wind. I'm thinking this should potentially grab the kill here. Unfortunately, Articuno is able to live it. And the big downside is the speed drop that comes with it is actually going to activate this thing's competitive and instead give it a special attack boost. And now a Freezing Glare is going to be enough to kill. And, you know, I did everything I could for the Persian. But it's, you know, sometimes it's, it's not enough. So... We get taken care of there, and while this thing does have the competitive boost, I'm still not really afraid. I do have mons that are faster, and I can definitely deal with it. So, at this point, I decide to bring in the old pile of sludge. I'm thinking I can finish this thing off with a shadow sneak priority, and at least the putty was able to knock it down to range where I can pick it off here. So, I didn't want to go into Rapska just yet. This thing has the opportunity to go for those recovers, and I just kind of, you know, would like this fella dead. So, the shadow sneak takes care of it, and at this point, Muck looks pretty solid against their team. I know that I can tank special hits from both the Greninja or the Slow King, and I can hit pretty hard in return. They decide to go into Slow King on the empty switch here, gonna get hurt by both the Spikes and the Stealth Rock, and I'm just gonna go for the knockoff here. Knowing that, of course, I can take a hit, I'm also faster, and we're almost able to just grab the kill there. I say knock off that Black Sludge, this town ain't big enough for the two of us. They do end up going for the Eerie Spell, which, of course, does a little bit less than half, because we out here bulky. Does get rid of 3 PP from knockoff, but, you know, we're not, we're not planning on using, like, 28 more of those, so... 
Of course, we know that we outspeed here, and the main goal is to kind of ensure that Muck has enough health to take care of the Greninja later on. So, after one more knockoff and then a little bit of a, a bite of a blob of black sludge, we're feeling, we're feeling pretty healthy. I guess as healthy as a Muck can be. I guess he's not the, not really the healthiest looking dude. But, regardless, we're above half and we're, you know, we're feeling pretty good. So, they can now bring in the one thing that does deal with the Muck, and that is going to be the Sandy Shock. So, this thing's been waiting to activate that Protosynthesis. It is going to have that booster energy. And after the spikes in Stealth Rock, it does take a little bit of chip, but it's going to also grab itself a nice little proto boost. So, this thing is honestly pretty scary. It does get the special attack boost from that and can hit extremely hard. I'm kind of running out of options here. I decided to switch into the Fortress. I feel like, you know, Fortress has basically been kind of hanging in the back for Death Fodder. Uh, it is going to allow me a free switch, and essentially all I got to do is bring in the old Walnut to die, and then I can have, you know, a better, a better option. So, an Earth Power does take care of me. The Protosynthesis boost with the nice little plus one special attack is actually some pretty scary magnets. I mean, truly, how the hell do they even work, right? But I do have a little fella who is kind of designed to take care of this thing, and that is going to be the Rabska. So I'm actually max specially defensive on this set, which is going to allow me to guarantee I can take an attack, and then I can get ourselves a nice little revival blessing. So this thing is going to end up going for the Thunderbolt here. It's going to do about half to me, which is perfect. It actually looks like I can take another one, so we could actually revive two if we want to. As the Revival Blessing comes through, and the, you know, the reason behind this is now I have the Lepiberry, which means once we run out of PP, it just immediately gets restored. So, first of all, we're going to glue Alolan Golem's ass back together, and I figure, my plan is essentially, since I haven't committed my Terra, if I need to, I can bring in the Golem, go for a Terra Flying on their Earth Power, and then finish them with an Earthquake. But, at this moment in time, I do have an opportunity to set up a Light Screen, and I figure, instead of reviving another, I'm actually just going to opt for the Light Screen. The reason is because the only other threat in the back is really the Greninja. They also have the Applin, which is more of just a defensive Eevee Light Mon. However, uh, I get that light screen up and then I figure I could revive another one. But you know what? I'm actually just going to go for the Bug Buzz just to guarantee that we can get some damage here. It's also going to put it in a spot where then Azelf can actually outspeed and then take it out. So they actually end up going for the Volt Switch to my surprise. And Greninja probably thinks he's coming into a nice little chill time. However, he is going to have to take the Bug Buzz from the Rabska, and since he hasn't had the ability to change his type quite yet, uh, after the spikes and the stealth rock, guess what? Bug Buzz comes through. We are not only here for the utility, baby, we're out here to buzz and kill some stuff. Down goes the Greninja, uh, and that actually is pretty much going to seal it up for us at this point, as Nidus decided to go back into the Sandy Shocks without its special attack Protosynthesis boost. He's going to take some stealth rock and some spikes, um, and he can finish off the Rabska, however, they do not want the smoke from our crazy alien ball, and they are actually just going to run. So, while it is an understandable forfeit in that situation, we're not going to let them get away with it that easy. First of all, the Sandy Shocks does take care of the Rabska, and that's fine, because that opens the door for me to bring in the newly revived and glued together Alolan Golem, who is going to now go for the Terra Flying as they go for the Earth Power. They do outspeed even with Choice Scarf, but... I'm able to finish them off with a nice little Earthquake, and that's going to bring in their final Pokemon that is the Diplin. So I'm actually just going to bring in the Azelf, and a Choice Bandit Explosion is going to take care of the Apple, no problem. Wait, actually, it, does, it actually lives it because this thing is defensive as hell, and so now I just, I just let Muck do it. So that is going to be the end of the game. Thank you guys very much for watching. As always, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. The support is greatly appreciated, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.